Hey, what's going on, BE3? We have a really cool, special, really awesome treat for you guys today. And we are sitting here with the, the number one Century 21 agent in the entire world. Let that sink in for a second, Gwen. Number one in the world out of, and we're also sitting with Craig Beggins and Mike Puma, and I'm, I'm Jeff Beggins here. So rarely do we get Gwen because she's clearly busy. So let's talk about real quickly. What does it take to be the number one Century 21 agent in the world? This is 340 transactions sold closed. and closed in 2018. That's almost one a day. Right, <laughs> almost one a day. And you took 25 days off. 127,000 salespeople, right? And in over 90 countries around the world. And you're her, the number one in the entire system right here. And we're very proud to have her on our team, so welcome, Gwen. Thank you. And we have very limited time with Gwen today because she's really busy. And Craig, let's start with you. You got a couple questions. We're gonna provide some value to you guys to see how you can, should you want to, be in this type of seat here. Well, I, I think it's important to, for people to know that you know you just started real estate last year and you're number one in the world, right? I know it's great, isn't it? <laughs> that's it not how it time. really. <laughs> that's not really how it works. Why don't you tell us how you started your selling career and when, how long you've been doing this? Sure, I started in 2001 and I started with a builder, mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Home Corporation, which is a part of Lennar, and essentially started my career there, started working my way up to senior sales, then a VP of sales for the U.S. Home Corporation. It was not an overnight process. It was very, very difficult. A lot of people ask me what your magic formula is. It's persistence, it's patience, it's being able to connect with people. And that is probably the, the biggest thing is just, it takes time. It's not an overnight process. Certainly not. No. So it sounds like you did a lot of new homework. When did you get into the residential side? Sure. Um, I started, I took a little bit of time off between being a VP of sales and my parents got sick. Um, when I started back, I started with a little boutique firm and it was good, but it wasn't quite what I was looking for. And what I found was I didn't have the support that I needed. Um, to be able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Yeah, it takes some support to do 340 closings a year. Yes, yeah, there, right. there, I can guarantee you there is absolutely no way that I would be able to do this with any other company. And I think that the fact that you, and I've seen other, other builders, or excuse me, other real estate companies, they don't have the processes in place that you have, even though they're as large as you and bigger than you. So that's a kudos to you because your back end, it eliminates all the guesswork and all the paperwork that I have to do. I just have to make sure that the front end is taken care of. I pass it off and it's, it, everything is taken care of for me. And I can't tell you how unbelievably helpful that is because then I can go on to the next client. And that's been kind of our goal is to take away all the non-income producing activities away yes. because what you do best is not inputting or following up or, yeah. or data work well, at it, all. It'd be impossible to do 340 transactions right. unless you have help. Yes. Right? Yes. So you're either going to have to pay for that help if you're somewhere else, which is going to get very expensive, or you're going to align with we the brokerage that has it. Exactly. Yeah, because an agent's job is to find buyers, find sellers, put them together pass them off and do it again. And yep. that's exactly what I do. That's and it. you took that literally. Yes. And you took <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he has something going on. That's really cool. So we're very proud to have you in the system. I know a lot of our user or watchers are in the Century 21 system with the Realogic family too. So we're all very proud of Thank you, you, what you're doing. Yes, there. congratulations. Thank you. So Mike, we were talking about marketing. So yeah. what some tactical questions? Yeah, I mean, I think from my perspective, because I spend a lot of time with agents who are not as successful as you are, and something that always comes up is, how do I stay in touch with my current customers, new customers, past customers, and they want to bombard them with real estate nonstop. And so I think it's important for them to hear from someone who's as successful as you are that that's not the best approach necessarily. So what's, what's your approach? For me, um, you're right, it isn't the best approach. I think the biggest thing for me is just being able to create those friendships. And a lot of it is just being able to be in contact with them and knowing their family, knowing that they you know, had a baby this year. I have a client right now, they're in Australia. They've been in Australia for four years but they just had their second baby and we're still in contact with each other. Eventually their position will bring them back to the States. And when they come back to the States, they're going to be buying a home again. It's just 
a matter of being able to align yourself and stay in front of them. But like Craig said earlier, they know I do real estate, right. but you sold their house. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it's just being a part of their lives. And quite honestly, it's fascinating for me because I love the fact that I can see people that when I sold them their first home, they were just getting married. And now you have families that are having two or three babies. You get to see them grow up. It's amazing for me. It really yeah, is. Oh, that's awesome. Sounds think, like you like people. I do. I love people. <laughs> but I think that, that needs to be kind of, I think, really drilled in because it doesn't happen by accident. I mean, you consciously make an effort when you see one of your past customers and their daughter is doing their uh, dance recital. Yes. Right? It doesn't go unnoticed no. to you. And it's not forced. It's you as a general, genuine person actually care. I would I tell everyone I love real estate so much that I honestly would do this for free. It's, it's just that much fun for me. And to be able to connect with the people and be able to watch with them and watch them grow and do all of this, I think that I'm in a very, I'm in a grateful and lucky position. I'm very, very happy. But like I said, it, it's just amazing that we have the opportunity to create so many dreams and so many lives are just expanded and it, it's just a wonderful thing. It really, really is. And it's fun. What I heard is that she wants us to drop our commission split because it's not about the money. So that's all awesome. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> so I think what it really comes down to is kind of something we always say from a company is, is in dad's statement to us is always trust us to the future. Yeah. And you can't fake that. You can't buy that. You have to be sincere and you have to be real about it. And so as we always remind, and you're a great example of this one is, the three questions every customer always asks is, can I trust you? Are you good at what you do? And do you actually care about me? And those are the three things you can never make up. You can't fake at all. So I think if you look at Gwen as an amazing example of that, the people trust her. They know she's good at what she does. She's number one in the world. You don't get any better than that. And she's very good at what she does and she cares about them. So I think that is the, the aspect. And I think your niche, you grew up in your niche, yes. right? Because that was what your tribe led you to was new homes. Yes. And so it kind of circled around there. But now it's spun from there. All your past clients are not all new homes and it just it's grown from there. But I think it's important for the agents that are watching that haven't yet reached this level, right? Their niche could be golf course communities yes. or townhomes or whatever. It doesn't matter what the niche is or just their sphere. But if you just really go all in and be real and help people, you can't help but be successful on that one. So I think you're a shining example of that. So thank you. Thank you. Parting words, advice to people who are watching. What do they need to do? Be patient. Things don't happen overnight. Um, make sure that you, people know that you care. People, like you said, they genuinely know if you care or if you're just doing it to get a paycheck. And if you right. do everything from your heart, the money will always follow. I, that's something that I don't ever worry about because if you do the right thing and you follow your heart, the paychecks will follow. No so that is true. Stick with it and do it. Yes. Awesome. Make it happen. Everybody, number one in the world. I know you'd love hearing that. She gets mad every time I call her that. She's doing a great job. So let's give her a big old hand. Yeah. And everyone like this, comment, share it. And um, hopefully we'll see you on all of the Vegas. C21 people see you in Vegas. Gwen will be there and we'll have a great time at the conference, 121. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank Talk you. Later. All right. BE3, we're back. We're Again. back. Two a day. Two a day today. This is kind and of fun. Who's B, who's E, and who's three? I guess BE3. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, so we just finished a really cool short podcast that we probably saw it. And with um, the Gwen, number one agent in the world, the number one such 21 agent in the entire world out of 90 countries, 127,000 salespeople. Pretty cool. And she's rocking it. Well. And I think what, what stood out to me most on that was how did she become number one in the world? And it just, it was an 18 year journey. I think it's important to note. Right. But, it, but what we didn't talk about is it was a three-year journey for her to become number one at U.S. Homes. So there's also a DNA strand of, of ethic, hard work, and, and work ethic, too, which kind of goes into this one. But even if you work hard, if you don't bring value, it's never going to work. So what, do you, what was your takeaway? What do you think was... Uh, what I took away was the authenticity. These customers literally are her friends, and she treats them that way. And when she told us what she does on, on Facebook, she goes and she's interested in their lives. And she comments about their kids growing up. You know, she put this young couple in a house and then they had a baby. So she stayed with them through childhood. And then the baby grows up and she stays involved and comments on their ballerina costume or whatever. 
yeah. and then they get another kid and they need a new house and who are they going to naturally go back to? And her, she, because she demonstrated that she cared. And she includes them in her life too, because it's not just real estate stuff she posts. I mean, mm -hmm. she's a very passionate bass fisher woman, right? She fishes, she's an amazing, she loves it because she, she competes in tournaments. And she shares that with her and her people see her as not just the real estate person, but as somebody who's really wrong at it. So she, she's bringing value. But I think the other side of that is the tactic of it from a marketing perspective is genius, right? Because not only is she building the relationship and solidifying that with all of her customers that she comments on and engages with, but the way she's actually, without even probably knowing it, she's leveraging the way the social algorithms work, right? Because by her engaging in her customers' stuff, their stuff is constantly showing up in her feed which is making it even easier. She's not having to go work and search and find them. They're already going to be there. Because yeah, especially it's telling, when you have 340 right. customers a year. It's, that's a lot of keep It's a here. lot. But if you're engaging, you're telling Facebook or Instagram that, oh, you care about what Susie has to say. And so Susie keeps showing up in your news feed. And she keeps showing up in this. And vice versa because now she's engaging. And so it just solidifies that relationship. And she, it prevents her from having to do what most people don't want to do which is just shove real estate stuff down people's throats and they feel uncomfortable doing it and it's not the best approach and Gwen has gotten around that by actually being a real human being. I mean, we have some Good agents concept. that don't even friend their customers on Facebook. Like right. you like me. You went through the work, right? But you're you're an exception to the rule, but as an agent, you go through the work of building this client, right? You had to find them, you get them to trust, you go through the whole process and then you just leave them, right? You're not even friending them. Yeah. Right? Never it's mind like, engaging. You're basically <laughs> saying Facebook is a CRM. It is. I mean, it really is. It's the CRM of our life. Like, it is literally the internet. Mm -hmm. Like, outside of a few websites and Amazon, that's where everyone's spending their time. Right? What, what stood out to me about that, which I think was pretty interesting, is it's all about value. It's all about trust. Right? right. So, you hear a lot of people talking about market shifts, right? Which is a whole different topic we won't get into today. Um, short version is there is no market there's a million micro markets so you got it that takes us down a whole different rabbit hole but the point is how do you insulate yourself as an agent in this market no matter what happens because your market could shift overnight because if your market is one specific neighborhood or zip code or town however you niche yourself down if, if let's take a neighborhood as an example your neighborhood market could shift in four days if three new houses come on the market Yes. Right. Yes. It, it totally, you have a different market and then your market totally shifts. If somebody's going through a divorce or an illness and dumps their house and changes the, the quick sale price, that's going to hit the appraised value. So you're not in control over all the market things. So stop worrying about what the market's doing and insulate yourself and protect yourself. So you're good no matter what's going on in the external environment. So that's one of the things I think we're going to run down. Oh, and the, your today. belief system is so important because all I, the agents that I'm around, the ones that are engaged in the offices I go to, mm -hmm. they are so damn busy, they're crushing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, five, six, seven, eight sales a month, and they're, they're just, they can't keep up. And then I hear other agents saying, I can't find any business. How do they do that? It's, it's, it's how they talk to themselves and, and how they treat their customers. Yeah, it's a mental game. It, it's 100% a, a numbers game and a mental game. We know that. So what was interesting is before we did this, when Mike and I went to lunch, and we were, we were just chatting about this and we said, let's talk about value because here's, here's what I think a lot of agents miss the point on. And, and they go out on the market and they're like, hey, I need some business. You want to sell your house? Hey, you want anybody selling their house? Anybody have a listing? What's going on? Give me some business. I need some, sold on everything. The market's great. Whatever it is, they, they exude sales, right? And sales resistance is, I think, is built into every single person that nobody wants to be sold anything. And the moment you even seem that you're selling them or asking for something, wanting something that's self-serving, you're dead. Yep. You're dead. So what, what Mike and I were talking about, and Craig, I think this would be interesting for you. I want to hear you chum in on this one too. Mike loves his house. He's got his kids. He's got his wife. They're very happy in their neighborhood. They love everything about it. And he is the most unlikely person to move in the planet. Right? So if I'm saying, hey, Mike, want to sell your house? First of all, I'm going to have commission, brother. He's going to hate it. And it's going to drive a little wedge of uncomfortability there. So we said, all right, let, let's talk about what would be the smart approach for somebody to bring value to you that might turn into income. Because here's the one point, guys. Listen to this and write this down. This is critically important. What is, Craig, what is the lifetime value of a customer to an agent? 
It's reported to be one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. All right, so one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Every customer that you close is worth one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Because they're going to do business with you again, they're going to refer business to you. Okay. And generally, the business they do gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So here's the mind shift we want you guys to think about today. This guy, Mike Puma, is worth to me as an agent one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Because once he going to move? You're going to move again. You guys have a, probably have a plan to we move do. Yep. once your kids are how old? Uh, once they're out of high school, so okay. 18, 19 years old, when my youngest, he's five now, so we're about 13 so years he's, away. So he thinks he's 13 years away. The average, <laughs> the average starts, you like that? <laughs> the, the average stats now are about seven years, right? It used to be five okay. years, everybody moves, now it's closer to seven years. So more likely when they get into middle school, you're going to realize how old your roof is and how old your water heater is and your pool is going to leak and need some more marsite and your roof's got the pavers need some problems and you had a plumbing leak and all this stuff gets in it and your wife wants a new kitchen and you bought a new car and you right things are going to happen on average in the next several years for you but right now in his world it's 13 years from now don't bother me with a sale right right but still he's worth one hundred thirty thousand dollars so let's let's chat about where is the value trapped right in mike puma as a friend of mine as part of my sphere of influence even though he's not going to be a seller, how is he still worth 130 grand to me? And his value of referring business to you, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And he's going to move in mm -hmm. five or seven years from now. He didn't think he's going to, but he's going to by, by average law. And so I'm still going to get that. I, I'm, right now, it's not, but he's still an asset of mine in my sphere. Right. So what we were chatting about. But was, how does he think of you? Good question. So does and he think of you as somebody who adds value to a real estate transaction? Or does he even think of me? Or does he? That's a bigger problem because mm -hmm. most of the time he would never think about me as an as an agent because he has zero relevance for a real estate person in his life. That's right. Or does he? So that's the conversation we were having. So chat, talk about what we were talking about over lunch. Yeah, I mean, I think for for me, right, and and I'll just speak for myself. I know that while in my head I may not move, you know, or want to move, I should say, for thirteen years, I also am financially savvy, right? I still want to know what my financial landscape is and I want to have backup plans. If tomorrow they redrew the school district and I had to move to be able to go get my kids in the school that I want, I need to know, am I in the position to do that, right? So having someone guide me to say, hey, just like I would on a financial advisor on investments and everything else, that my house is the largest financial asset that I own. So wouldn't it make sense for me to know what that home is worth in its current state. And as me and my wife are thinking about, we may not be moving, but we're thinking about doing different renovations. We did our kitchen last year, we're gonna do bathrooms, like planning that stuff out, having someone who's in the business who can advise us on, hey, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna use? Who are you gonna use? And bringing me value as a resource, even though I may not wanna move, there's things happening within that asset that are important to every homeowner, right? And I think as an agent, if you can find a way, if you came to me and said, hey, it's an important financial asset for you, let's do a home health talk. Let's just figure out what are your plans? What are you gonna do? What is it worth now? What, what factors play into that? So as the market changes, you can pay attention to those things so you know like automatically what's happening, right? And that way, if tomorrow or a month or six months from now, something major happens, obviously you're going to call me, but you're going to know, are you even in a position, relatively speaking, to make a move that you need to potentially make? And so if you can bring me that value, that's value that's important to me, even though I may not move for 13 years. Okay, so let's put salesperson hat on for a second, because that's what you are watching. And that's what we are just by nature. So here's the reality of what I'm really doing here. I want to make sure when anything real estate related pops inside of this thing in here, right? And let's talk about it's a head. You can say <laughs> let's talk about the brain. Right? But here's the thing. Anything that happens home related. Now let's talk about that. Home related, not sale related. Home and lifestyle related. I have to retrain his brain that I am not just a person to call when he wants to sell his house, right? I equal real estate. I equal trust. I equal value. 
I equal his wife wants to pressure wash their pool cage and house and get a quote for windows, me, right? Coconut palm tree with a hammock, me, right? New roof estimate, me. Air conditioning is blowing warm, me, right? That's the mind shift that needs to happen in this business. I had a bad thought and the thought was, you want to become nextdoor.com for your customer because that's where they're going right. to nextdoor.com for. Yeah, you're right. I need an AC repair, man. I need this. Mm -hmm. I need that. And yeah. if you don't, as agents, engage with your customers, they're going to go to nextdoor.com yeah. and you're out. I mean, Nextdoor basically became the Angie's List, yeah. right? If Angie's List would have played their cards right, they could have been Nextdoor, right? Nextdoor just did it better than Angie's List because they went after the community versus like the home improvement where Angie's List kind of became that like one trick pony where Nextdoor kind of became everything community related. But 100%, I, you, you're spot on. I think you need to be the go-to resource and that's the key it's being a resource not not a salesman but you're not limiting yourself to a zip code and nextdoor.com we're talking about people you know your your whole sphere yeah your whole sphere and it, it's everything right because here's what i want to happen when mike goes to his kids friends birthday party at the park this weekend and they're bullshitting with their friends and one of them says they got a job transfer i have to pop into his brain as an alarm goes off, real estate, real estate, real estate, think of job, right? And this is my job as a salesperson to provide enough value to him. So anything happens real estate related, it automatically sends out a trigger and an alarm that he wants to send to me because they, he absolutely knows that I'm good at what I do, he can trust me and I have his back, right? And that'll automatically give him pride in the referral to me, which gives him the proverbial pat on the back that he took care of his friend. So my job has completely changed from being a, a real estate person to, to advisor. a lifestyle advisor with everything home related, right? And that's a big time shift, guys, that let's talk about competitive pressures, right? Everybody else is entering this business industry right now because they see it as a commodity, an algorithm, as estimate, right? And a simple list your home on whatever.com and or Zillow does it all. And there's a commodity. So this is the uncommoditation, uncommoditization and insulation of yourself to protect yourself no matter what happens in the real estate industry. That's kind of what I'm thinking. What do you yeah. think about that? I think that's what I have, it's going to have to happen. The things I can't talk about yet. That'll be next week's topic. Yeah, we got some big things <laughs> yeah, on the work. Yeah, huge things. But this is, that's the point, guys, is how important is this? Because I promise you the market will change, mm -hmm. right? The market's always changing, always changing and global economic pressures will come and because everything's a cycle. It might not be now, it might not be next year, it might not be the year after that. I hope it doesn't. But when it does come, I don't care if I'm insulated properly as a smart, forward-thinking business person. I've sold real estate, but the real estate that I've sold is his little part in his brain that has to do with real estate because we said $130,000. I don't care if he never moves, but the referrals that are going to come out of him of his buddies that he plays baseball with and his college friends and his wife's friends that they go do their things with, that will feed business nonstop to my career that's worth $130,000. So I'm basically building a cheerleading squad, but my only sell is in here. I always joke about the old filing cabinets. There's only room for one person, right? You've got, who does, you, you have a good guy that does your taxes. Yep. Do you have an attorney that you trust? Yep. You have somebody to cut your hair? Yep. Oh, wait, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> But you have somebody who does your real estate, right? That's what it's got to be. And there's only room for one. There was not two people that popped into your brain. There was only one. So that's that's the issue here. So that is, I think, the value that I want to make sure we get through today is is that. So what else? Yeah. How do you do that? I mean, it's, it's called asking questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being consistent, right? You have to create. We talk about it all the time. Not being tied to the outcome, which this is even more important to that because for most There's agents, no outcome. the outcome is the sale. In this case, it's just value, right? It's just, mm -hmm. that's all it is. And so rather than being tied to any outcome, if you're just tied to the process of bringing value, it will create consistency. You'll do that on a regular basis to the same degree that Gwen is regularly and consistently following up with her sphere, which has then allowed her over time to become the number one agent in the world. You're just creating brand and building equity within your consumer base, which at some point will monetize without you even having to ask for it. Well, I think that's important too. It makes, it takes the pressure off the agent. Yeah. Cause agents don't want to be salesy. No, most of them aren't don't feel comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. And if they can just 
put themselves in a position, you owe it to your your friends to give them value. Yeah. And ignoring them is the wrong thing to do. So what so, are some of the things you can do to, to add value? Yeah, I always talk to you have to talk to people. That's our job, right? Talk to people. So let's give you some talking points. What what do I need to know about Jeff in order to add value to his home thing? Great question. Should I know what his house is worth? Yep. Should I know what he owes on it? Yep. What's happening in the neighborhood? Should he maybe have a line of credit that he doesn't Yeah. He what a pull on? What do you Yeah, what is emergency situation? Do you have an emergency stash? And if right? I start and I'm not being pry here. Uh -uh. I'm just trying to add value. Yeah. But let's say I know Jeff I'm making these numbers up. He's got a four hundred thousand dollar line of credit with no balance on it. Yeah. And he could borrow that money at four percent. Yep. And I know of a real quick flipper handyman special over here that Jeff could pick up for 120, put 20 grand in it, and flip it for 180. Yep. Could I could I he didn't we think people need to sell their houses, do business with us. They can buy more houses from us too. Well, and sometimes it's <laughs> it's not to sell a house. Or their friend might want to do that. Right? Or, or the value do. is actually telling them not to sell. Right, me and Jeff were talking about this at lunch. If I called Jeff and said, hey, thinking about selling my house, if he really wants to bring me value, most agents are gonna be like, oh, great, I can help you. The real first why? question should be is, why? Do you need it, right? What's the house rent for, do you know? Because if he comes, well, and, like the, my neighborhood, for example, like right? Like my all-in mortgage is 1,700 bucks. I could rent my house all day for twenty two to twenty four hundred bucks. It's five hundred. Doesn't make sense for me to sell my house unless I physically have to or I have something better to do with the money. Right? So the real question, if he has my best interest, is Mike, do you need to? Right? Let's maybe maybe let's explore some ways. Do you have enough equity? Because maybe we can pull the equity and go buy the house that you want and keep this as a rental and we just increase your income. Right versus going the other way, like that's the value. But unfortunately, most agents will dive right into, "Oh, yeah. let me help you. I can sell that house," and they they get sidetracked instead of actually trying to to bring value. And and this is exactly what we did at lunch today. We were just actually really having this conversation. And so, what I would do as an advisor to to Mike for him him and Courtney and the family is saying, "Look, I know you don't want to move, right? Even though you should move to the beach, but you're not right now, and that's cool." Right, but so, but let's talk about what's real right now. If you guys hypothetically were to move, I know you love your neighborhood, I know you love your, your marketplace, I know you love the school district, but the reality of it is he, they would move if something happened, yeah. right? And the, and the example I did is he went home tonight and Courtney said, hey, look at this, and there's a pregnancy test, and, and she finds out that there's triplets on the way. You're moving yeah. because you need more room, yep. right? So that's the case. And, and so that's, life, life could happen between now and 13 years from now also. Correct. So here's my point. Don't move, never move, never sell your real estate ever. It's the large, best investment you can ever have held long term. The only reason to ever sell this house is if you need the money for something else or life changes and you need a different place to live. That's it. So then, but here's what you need to know is what is your house worth right now? Not because I want you to sell it because I know you need to know what it's worth because you have an idea what your 401k is worth. You even know what the ring is worth on your wife's finger right? Because you had it appraised, at least you have a ballpark idea about what it's worth, right? So here's what your house is worth. Go to Zillow. I don't need to do anything fancy for that one. It is, there's your ballpark, right? So at least you know what's your equity in it based on that. You know what your mortgage balance is. You know what the ballpark value is of range. And then say, hey, here's what you ought to do. My buddy Craig is the best mortgage guy I know. He's a friend of mine, just like talking to me. You should just call him because he wants to help people. You should know what you guys would qualify for on your current credit score, on your income and your wife's income, plus the equity that you have. Let's say you have 200 grand in equity, 125 grand in equity in your house, right? So there you could put down on a new house. What house could you qualify for? And what would your payments be that you guys qualify for and that you're comfortable with paying? And then now at least you know, hey, look, we could afford a house up to 850 and be happy, right? We don't need to, but it's certainly nice. And that starts new conversations with your wife when she starts saying, hey, honey, why don't we remodel the bathrooms and take an equity line out? And you're going to say, wait a second, what if we bought that house over on Elmberry Street and it's a little bit bigger, you can have that little movie theater that you want. Our payments would go up 150 bucks a month because we have this much equity. At least just tuck it in your brain, put it in the kitchen cabinet, in the drawer, and we can talk about it later. So now I provided value because I don't want his business. I don't care if he sells me or not. It doesn't matter to me. It's not going to change my world. But bringing this value is going to provide so much value that I just pushed out anybody else that might have been going after that real estate in his head. So when he's at the baseball game this weekend and his friend's getting transferred, 
there's no doubt about it, I'm going to get that referral because I'm not in it for myself. I'm 100% in, in it to make sure that their family is in a good financial position and they know their options. But I planted a seed as a salesperson, right, to provide something of value that might make sense for him. That's kind of, that's what we talked about. And that changes about. the dynamics of the conversation at dinner tonight. No doubt. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because what you just empowered them. Oh, right, there's a word right there. Yeah. You just empowered them to make a decision if they are so inclined to. 100%. And educated them. Because is there, that's, we know this business, we know this business. Is there a house that's nicer and newer and bigger that you can move into for the same or less mortgage payment than you're paying right now? Yeah. Possibly. The answer is 100% yes. Doesn't matter where it is. <laughs> yeah. In, in your neighborhood. There, there is there is a something you can do with the equity you have in your house, because you told me what it was, yep. versus what's on the market right now. If you put that equity into another house, you can have the same payments that you have right now. Correct. It's called moving up. Yes. Right? So that is now an option that you have in your pocket. So you can say, because you, you guys have a financial decision to make, if you go put new bathrooms in your house, yep. it doesn't change the fact that, when was your house built? 2007. 2007. It doesn't change the fact that your plumbing is 11 years old. Right. So is your electric, so is your roof, so is your water heater, so is your everything, your yeah. electrical outlets, your pool pump, your screen cage, yeah. everything. And, you know, in the next four years, things are going to go out. So you're really putting a new bathroom in an 11-year-old structure versus a brand new one that's built in the same school district that your payments could be the same as brand new, right? So not that you should, but at least you need to know that you could. And at least you know that I'm here to provide options and value. And then when you say, Jeff, I want a new kitchen or a bathroom, like you ask, hey, who could I use for a bathroom remodel? At least you talk thought enough to ask me so I can guide you to somebody that I trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's just something that's popped in my head too. And if you sell that house now, you lived, you've lived in it for two of the last five years. So it's a tax-free capital gain. That's a smart thing to do. Just keep selling your house, pull out the cash tax-free, buy again, buy again, buy again. Yeah. And rolling in, rolling in, but not that you need to, and not that Just you have options. But at least now you know. But what have I done? Well, what's my saying? Awareness gives you flexibility. Flexibility gives you options. Options give you power. And I, I think that's the key, though, is your most people. You know, they have a financial guy that they'll talk to, or they're financial savvy enough to look at their bank account and their four hundred one k and all the obvious places to look. Should I invest? Can I invest? Where should I do this? But the largest financial transaction for most people is the structure they're living in, yet they don't pay attention to what their options are with it, right? And I think that's where there's a big void in the marketplace that, that an agent could potentially fill and, and will lead to them getting that potentially $130,000 of value. So the reason why we did this today on this, this broadcast, this podcast, is for you to see the conversations we just had, right? Because this is the conversation we believe you should be having with your friends and with your sphere and providing value because guys when the market does shift and it will you're going to have what you have and it's going to be your past clients need to think about you your sphere needs to think about you and if they think about you you're never going to have to worry about business because it will always come to you and every person in your sphere is worth one hundred thirty thousand dollars to your business model if you provide value but if you sit around and once a year you give them a magnet at christmas it's not doing it anymore because the power that we talk about all the time is right here. Because if you're not talking to your past clients, they're going to connect with somebody else. Yep. It's just too easy to lose that connection, guys. And this is the way to own it. This connection will not be bought by an Instagram feed, right? It won't. When I have this value proposition conversation, try to scroll his feed all you want. You're not going to take away my position in his head. But if I didn't provide this value to have these conversations, he is subject to the scroll. But this and is not a one hit wonder either. You no. don't do this once, no, you it's do consistency. it. It should be it should be twice a year, every year, you know, whatever you'll know your customer and, and their situation. My financial guy calls me every quarter, correct? Right. We're gonna sit down. Yep. Same thing. Have a same beer, thing with us. And let's just go over your numbers. What has changed in your life? Yep. Same did thing you with us. Pay off your car. Did you pay down your credit line? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you where are you? He right. takes his little notes and next quarter we'll get together and do it again. Right. So what we were thinking would be cool for you to do is grab one of your best friends. Practice. And pull them on a quick little podcast of yours, which means pull your phone out, put it on a tripod and talk in front of it and have this conversation. And if you were to go live and post that onto your feeds, guess what? Your sphere is going to know that you offer something that's pretty cool and you're offering an asset valuation, a home health checkup, whatever the hell you want to call it, doesn't matter. But you're providing value and solidifying yourself in their brain. So 
one of the takeaways I want to make sure that we provide value for you guys today is do it, try it, take one, do one, post one, and you're going to see your friends commenting saying, hey, you know what, it's pretty cool. You know, why don't you give me a call? I'm, I'm kind of curious. And you need to have your go-to team, right? You know how to pull values on, the, on a house. That's easy, right? They, Zillow does that. But you should have a mortgage guy you trust that you can actually provide this value to it. Mm -hmm. You should see what he's doing on insurance, right? Maybe you should get an insurance quote. What if he doesn't win it? What if he could save a couple hundred bucks a quarter? That's, that's value. Very good value. Hey, what's going on in your house right now? What's going on with your, you need anything at yeah. all? What projects do you have planned? Have you thought about anything? Right. And yeah, then simple stuff. Kitchen, what kind of kitchen are you thinking about doing? Start the conversation saying, hey, have you talked about the home equity lines? Are you going to pay cash for this thing? You might be able to pull something out. Why don't you talk to my lender guy? It might be a better idea for you. Right? It just starts that conversation. So that's what the, the takeaway I was looking for out of this. And we'll yep. see, who, see who's going to take advantage of it. Very good. Yep. So, I, I think it's important to note, though, the reason going back to, you know, the down market, the biggest thing that I think affects people when the market's going to shift is that deals aren't just going to fall in their lap. Deals are still happening, right? That's the misconception. Deals are still happening. They're just not. It sound like we were in a ditch. We're, our sales are 10% no, over last year. Right. But I'm saying what you're doing, what a lot of agents, not the good ones, but there's a lot of agents out there that are using my market shifting. We're, you know, we're starting to see things slow down because they're reading headlines, right? Right. What they really are is excuses. But regardless, if tomorrow the bottom started to drop out and things started to go down, or if you happen to be in a subsection and a sub market that happens to be slowing down or have a shift in it, South Florida shifted a little bit. It's slower than we are, right? In those markets, deals are still happening. They're oh, yeah. just not as easy, right? Can't post a house in the MLS and get it sold in a day, right? It just doesn't happen the same way because as the market shifts and slows down, there's less active agents, which means there's less active eyeballs looking at the MLS, which means you have to work harder. And all we're doing is creating a way for you to build so much brand within your sphere that you're still going to insulate yourself from that. And that's the key. So there you go. There's no excuse. Parting words, Mr. Beggins. Uh, just in the true words of Nike, just do it. Let's do it. I like it. <laughs> Talk to your friends, guys. Stay relevant. Own their mind share. Own it, own it, own it, and you don't have to worry about anything. So, as always, reach out. Let us know what we can do to help you. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.